Hello and welcome to this video on the future of urban mobility and action in association with Accenture. I'm Graham Neal, I'm editor of Smart Cities World. So the evolution of technology is impacting how mobility and infrastructure providers create improved transportation networks, which offer new kinds of services and build resilience to benefit citizens and businesses alike. Transport for West Midlands is a transport authority serving a population of 2.8 million people in the Midlands of England. It operates bus, rail, tram, and metro networks. Joining me to discuss the future of urban mobility from Transport for West Midlands is Mike Waters, its Director of Policy, Strategy, and Innovation. Hi, Mike. Thanks for joining us. No problem. It's a pleasure. So to begin with, uh, we've been talking about, you have quite a unique take on what constitutes the transport ecosystem. Uh, I was wondering if you can explain what it means to you. Well, I suppose, I mean, the concept of transport ecosystem, I think it's really just an evolving view of what integration really means in transport. We've spoken about integration for decades. Yeah, and previously it was focused really just on those physical aspects i suppose around how we mesh infrastructure and services together and yeah this very engineer focused thing thinking about reducing interchange penalties but um i i think we we really need to push the boundaries further and and certainly in the west midlands we've taken a lot of inspiration from the work of people like glenn lyons where they talk about this triple access system where a physical mobility digital connectivity and and the spatial proximity act together because transport is that drive demand and thinking about how those three things affect accessibility we're in we're we're, we're accessibility planners not transport planners um and I think in the West Midlands, we then really started to, to think, because that just still deals really with the supply side, thinking about the demand where you know, we, we mesh the infrastructure and the mode with the energy systems, a kind of supply consumer led piece around, is it leisure? Shopping? And then from an industrial perspective, clearly starting to think about then what industry 4.0 initiatives how that that works with facilities um and then and then the digital integration of that so the the definition the breadth of the transport ecosystem suddenly goes a lot wider and and personal interest for me is is things that i don't think we're really exploring enough but which are part of that ecosystem um where you start to think about privacy because this becomes very much more than a a digitally enabled and facilitated ecosystem and and then we've got several axes within privacy which i don't mm. think the consumer or the industry have switched on to mm-hmm. enough yet around sort of decision and self what you do with informational privacy and and surveillance privacy which as we as we deal with connected and autonomous vehicles mobility as a service mm-hmm. this service level uh, the, the entering the transport ecosystem brings a whole extra dynamic as well. Mm-hmm. You know, one of the things the TFWM prides itself on is it's the emphasis in the local economy and local people. Um, and you've talked a little bit about it already, but could you tell me a bit more about uh, TFWM's approach to this kind of transport ecosystem and, you know, how it fits in with uh, that aim? I think because again, transport is very much about meeting a need that's a derived demand. It's clearly got to be thought about very much in the local context. There's an awful lot of global best practice from all around the world, and some some phenomenal things going on which we learn from every day. But unless we convert those and apply them in 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 that local context, then then it fails. And for us in in the West Midlands, it's this, this industrial heartland of the UK was there with the Industrial Revolution. Uh, the that manufacturing and traditional industries legacy drives through our economy, but also our, our skill sector and, and what we're actually excellent at doing. And that really led a lot of the start of our transport 
innovation program where we were looking at what could we do in the transport sector to support things like the automotive industry so that was one of the big motivators for for getting very into the connected and autonomous mobility space and then that that journey's taken us more more bright widely into just looking at how we really integrate industrial strategy and economic strategy properly into what we we do when we're pushing the boundaries of of the possible in what we how we shape the transport system um and and just from a sustainability point of view there's very few models of sustainability that don't put economic prosperity as an essential factor in in having a having a sustainable system of any kind but fundamentally the other layer the local people transport's very engineer led mm. um industry and so people in transport tend to assume that everything happens through logical reasons if i pull this lever then that will happen but fundamentally actually it is a consumer-led thing and 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 the designers and providers of the system often fail to recognize that so we've been doing a lot to to improve both our generalized understanding just lifting best practice from the retail sector the banking sector and then moving on to personalizing that understanding so that we can move ultimately towards some kind of level of predictive understanding around people. How, how do they feel? What are the emotions? What's their experience? Um, and, and again, this is something in sort of 25 years of transport planning. It's only in the last couple of years we've really started to, to push into that. Yeah, the, I mean, the consumer that approach, I think, is interesting. Uh, challenging i guess as well um i mean elsewhere i guess um you know can you talk a bit about other aspects of tfwm's vision uh you know your priorities and projects linked to this and i know you've been working with accenture on absolutely. some of these if you could elaborate on those please yeah ab- absolutely um i mean there's a, there's a lot of things that we've started and been running over the last five years. I've mentioned a couple around, you know, connected and autonomous mobility lab, future transport zone, a digital data exchange we call Convex as a UK platform. We've got the, the UK's largest 5G mobility test bed. We're doing all sorts of things with other local authorities and the police to you know, develop and integrate data and services. Um, so there's a lot of activity, but what Accenture really helped us do when we, we took a step back with them, uh, looking across a kind of global benchmarking exercise to really recognise across the world, there's some amazing good practice and some people that in some cases we're going to be a follower of. And in other cases, we might actually be able to provide some leadership on. And so with Accenture, you, we really talked about how the West Midlands can start to become a global hub for clean mobility. This, this thing we've spoken about, about accelerating towards a very much more human, human centered, inclusive design philosophy around, around um, mobility that, that delivers those real benefits. And Accenture really just helped us, I suppose, think that through from a, a slightly external perspective when you get close to it and you're, you're doing it every day, it's quite easy to lose a bit of perspective, I suppose. And so just stepping back, providing a bit more of a structured framework for that, looking at what our pathways can be based on the kind of international benchmarking exercise as we evolve as, a, as, a, as an area and as a transport system. Um, so really good and then just sort of really drilling into what are the what are the critical enablers what are the critical success factors within how we actually do that so that that um what has almost been an organically grow and still cutting edge we're still one of the strongest areas i think in the uk in this but but really then ra- post rationalizing some of the good moves we've made but helping us set a, a much clearer more coherent path forward from this point and you mentioned the future transport zone uh, it's a fascinating area really um could you give an outline of the the work you've done on this for people who maybe aren't that familiar with it uh, and 
you know, there are a lot of learnings I think that other cities can take from it. Um, if you could spell out some of those, that would that would be great. Absolutely, um, it's probably worth setting a, a brief context. The the UK government set up a, a program of these future transport zones, uh, five in total. The West Midlands sort of helped uh, kind of develop the the concept of the DFT and became the UK's Pathfinder program for these. So we started probably a couple of years in advance of some of the other areas in the UK. Um, and I suppose for us, the the kind of the vision around that is is really the zone exists to help us kind of empower and enable people to make more sustainable travel decisions. And and this is because I think as, as anybody involved in transport recognises, if we're trying to tackle uh, sustainability, decarbonisation, all of these things, fundamentally, the way we travel today um, is not sustainable. And we've got to really focus on how we can how we can make those connections so we've we've had a very practically driven program we've we've drilled right down into this understanding of people where we've been working with the companies like Experian to to develop a much better view developing detailed personas and evidence around what people think and feel how they travel we've strengthened our smart payments platform considerably so we're with the largest platform in the uk outside of london very much leveling up to the to the london level of system which in the uk is much more challenging outside of london because we operate some a deregulated transport market where bus operators are commercial and not commissioned by the cities um, so that's quite complex we've been doing a whole load of experience-led initiatives mobility credits, um, demand responsive transport to really engage with the traveler and understand what initiatives work and don't work because it's uh, transport needs to be designed in the local context. So we, we can take best practice, try it, apply it. E-scooters, um, yes, we've been sort of on, on, in the vanguard of the UK experiencing what e-scooters can do for the transport system. And then we've put a lot of effort into digitizing the transport system as well. So as, as, as we take best practice from other sectors, a frightening amount of transport is, is run in a context where people think that PDF thing something is digitizing it, but actually taking it and making it properly machine readable, optimizing the processes is one of those foundation stones for us then being able to move to apply mm -hmm. predictive understanding, both to support the operational and tactical side of running a transport system and operating it, but also to help us plan those big interventions in a much more targeted and intelligent way. Um, and so it's, it's quite a complex program, 22 million pounds, over four years, um, getting industry match into that, doing things like developing a new layer of 5G enabled sensors so we can see and understand what is happening on the transport system with a lot more confidence, driving that into then the service information. Um, it's it's fascinating. We're, mm. we're absolutely loving it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um so uh, we're filming this in early uh, 2021. So the the effects of COVID-19 are you know, sadly still being felt by us all. Um, and, you know, the, the pandemic's had really dramatic consequences in both the mobility and transport space. How is TFWM dealing, dealing with these consequences? I, I, yeah, it, it's an epic challenge isn't it for for anybody um and as a transport authority we're we're some of that integrating glue in the heart of all of those actors in the transport system that are having to grapple with this and i think as i mentioned in the west midlands as with most of the the, the areas in in the uk 
a lot of the actors in the transport system are are commercial um and so they're facing a whole set of of new realities around what that looks like so a lot of the practical side of what we've been doing is acting as that that integration between national policy and and the support that national government has been providing to transport operators and working with the transport operators to really make sure that fundamentally essential services that there is a minimum level of of service operation going on so that those who don't have access to a car can still get around safely and cleanly um so that's been you know practically there's been a lot of a lot of effort gone into both the data and the intelligence around how we do that keeping that network running every day we we operate a lot of bus stations tram tram system so we're as well as supporting the operators we're also an operator um making sure that cleaning regimes go up um we've managed to keep tram patronage higher than most the other modes by really good communications um so just letting the public know what they can do supporting our highway authorities as they do things like road space reallocation um a, an action plan i mentioned e-scooters that's been a big we went from from zero to to sort of deployed to a large area in the space of about three months as a direct response to covid um and and just just a terrific operational effort there ultimately making sure we keep keep things safe putting on emergency uh, public transport services to get key workers to hospitals um and and converting bits of the transport system that to do that but and this is the interesting bit i think that's all the the immediate response this question of whether covid is sort of as tragic as some of the the outcomes are is it an opportunity in in us looking at at how we can live life differently as we look at a a new future towards a decarbonized transport system so is it an opportunity or a threat And, and at this moment it's hard to make a call it could go either way clearly we want to to look at how we can cement some of the better uh behaviors where people can shift their way of traveling or avoid it at all as we're doing now speaking over zoom um and so we, we're having at the moment looking to have a very much deeper conversation with the traveling public try and strengthen our emphasis on freight and logistics because this has been this massive boom in e-commerce um and that has a profound impact on the transport system in terms of of goods vehicles and the amount of vehicle mileage going on and then looking at what we can do to support the localism agenda to really bring forward the this concept of 15 minute neighborhoods so we're doing a lot of work around mobility hubs what do you really need those to look like for them to work how can they meet people's needs um how does that work with with an e-commerce uh increased e-commerce prominence in in the economy so it's it's learning we're all on a we're on a learning journey as every other city in the world is at the moment around around this so forums like smart cities world are are really interesting to help us learn together (laughs) i mean you you mentioned the uh transport networks almost serving like the the glue bringing everything together um transport is vital i guess and the challenges that you you face are interesting ones i guess as well as challenging ones because it's that interplay of legacy infrastructure new technology and uh the the user i guess at the heart of it um so mike just wanted to thank you for shedding a bit of light on um what tfwm are doing thank you it's been a pleasure